Oh, hey, Joe to Jock fans, Steve Atherton here. Uh, I've got a really quick video for you today. Four simple tips that will improve your pool game. Uh, I've been playing a long time. I used to play in the bars a lot. I used to play in the basement as a kid. We had a table growing up. And I see people make the same mistakes over and over. So this video should help you correct that. So watch the tips, apply a few of the techniques, and I guarantee you, you'll improve your pool game. All right, so tip number one is simply get low. Uh, I watch people in the bars all the time shooting, and they're standing up here above the cue trying to hit a shot. And you cannot visualize the line of the shot very well. It's the same thing in shooting a gun. Can you shoot it better from here, or can you shoot it better from here, right? Obviously, you're going to be better down the line of sight of the barrel or of the cue. So, you need to get wide in your feet, you need to get your butt out, and you need to get down low to the table, here. Now I can see down the line of the pool cue, I can see the angle that the five ball needs to be hit at to go in that pocket down at the other end. So tip number one, really simple, get your butt out, get away from the table a little bit, and get low so that you can see the shot better. Really easy. All right, tip number two, don't shoot the thing so hard. When I watch people play, not only are they standing too upright, but then they're, they're wailing at the ball like they get extra credit for how fast the thing goes in the pocket on the other end. You don't need to hit it hard. In fact, you're not gonna make very many shots if you hit it too hard. It's a precision game. It's like putting in golf. The ball needs to crawl into the hole at a certain speed so that more of them will go in. So do some drills where you practice crawling balls over the front of the pocket and try to see if you can make some where they don't actually touch the other sides of the pocket or the back edge of the pocket. Just see if you can make them fall over the front and roll in. You should be able to read the number on the ball as it trickles over into the pocket. Okay, tip number three is don't shoot shots that you cannot possibly make. I see so many people that don't judge what's in front of them and actually realize that the shot they're trying to make or the shot that they call is literally impossible. So in a situation like this, if I'm shooting the 14 ball here into that corner, you will notice that as I bring my camera in here and I get my line of sight and I come down here and I'm looking at that pocket, I can see that the 14 is going to clip just on the corner or just at the left edge of that five ball. There is no possible way I can fit that in that pocket without touching the five. But people will look at that shot and go, yeah, I can kind of, I think I can make it in there. And then they step up and they might have a decent attempt, but they catch the five ball every time. All right, so tip number four for the day is learn to control the cue ball. And what I mean by that is learn to control what it does after it hits the object ball. So there are essentially three things you need it to do. You either need it to stop, you need it to follow, or you need it to back up. If you can do those three things and, and kind of predict where the cue ball is gonna go after it hits the object ball, it's gonna allow you to start thinking about your next shot. You won't be just looking at the shot in front of you going, I gotta make this shot and then I'll see what happens. You're gonna say, I'm gonna hit this shot and then I know if I can make the cue ball go here, I'll have this shot next. And then if I can make the cue ball go here or here, I can hit this one or this one. It's gonna allow you to string together runs of, of balls that are gonna allow you to beat people at the pool. So, we're gonna do a couple little drills here to learn to control the cue ball. Okay, simple drill. We're gonna use the diamonds here on the side of the table. I'm gonna start with these three. And the first drill is to just get the cue ball to stop dead when it hits the five. So I'm gonna put the cue about halfway up the center of the ball. I'm gonna put a nice smooth stroke on the cue and I'm gonna to try to get the cue ball to stick right where it hits the five ball. Um, when you're, whenever you're hitting any of these shots, always chalk up the stick. There's nothing worse than a miscue. It feels terrible when you miss hit one, it's like shanking a ball in golf. So maybe when you're playing at the bar, you give it a little flare, you put your foot on there and you 
people love that. Um, so we're going to work on making the ball stop dead. So we go about halfway up the cue ball here, maybe just below half, and put a nice smooth stroke on this. Okay, so not too bad for the first one. The five ball was sitting here, cue ball stuck almost right where it hit. So that's a good start. I know now if I move the cue about a, I mean an eighth of an inch, quarter inch below center and put a nice sharp stroke on that, that the cue ball is going to sit. Now we're going to work on making it follow up to the next diamond. All right, so in order to get the cue ball to follow the five ball, we're going to move the cue up just a little bit on the cue ball, probably even just a quarter inch or so. And you'll see that it will follow and it depends on how fast the table is and how hard I hit this ball, how far it will travel after it hits the five. So I'm going just above center. I missed the five ball, but I got the cue ball to travel almost to my diamond I was aiming for. It might take me 10, 15, 20 minutes of practicing to get it to predictably come down a certain amount. There are times you could hit it and have it follow all the way down to the end of the table if you need. But once I start doing this with these different uh, diamonds and I can predictably get the ball to go to certain positions, I'm starting to learn to control the cue ball. All right, now we got to work on the last one, which is everybody's favorite, which is pulling the cue ball back after we hit the object ball. Everybody loves to put some backspin on there and rip the thing back. Now you do have to be a little careful. If you angle the cue too far down on the cue ball, you're going to jump underneath it and rocket it off the table and smoke somebody in the head or break a window or something. We don't want to do that. So go about a half an inch below center, get a good chalk on the cue so you get really good contact and put a nice, confident, little bit faster stroke through that cue ball and see if we can bring it back. Didn't quite get enough on that one, didn't quite hit down enough to pull it back more. So I'll try this a couple more times, see if I can get it to come back the right amount. Again, should be 10, 15 minutes of practice. All of a sudden, you're gonna to start to have some really good control of what that cue ball's doing. Okay, so these four tips we've talked about come into play here. So if I need to make the five ball, and then I'm gonna to try to make the one ball, I want to apply the top spin technique we've practiced so I can get the cue ball to come down here to make my next shot on the one easier. If I leave it sit back here, I've got a bunch of green to work with and then a really tough angle to get to the one. So we'll try it here. So we gotta go high on the cue ball, get low, Smooth stroke. Cue ball follows down the table. I've got a much easier time now getting on the one ball. And there we go. So, remember, don't hit it too hard. Get low so that you can see down the cue. Put a smooth stroke on the thing. Don't hit a shot that you can't hit. Uh, and learn to control the cue ball, and you got it. I'll see you in the next video.